So today we're going to be taking a look at family and its influence on our social and emotional development throughout the lifespan. So we're going to open it up with a question. So what do you think of when you think of the word family? As you sit and reflect on that, let's actually take a look at what some of my family members' perspectives are when I ask them the same question. So first, we're going to start with my mom. And she said, people who are related through either birth, marriage, or adoption. And on the, on the left, it's us in 1999 on my first birthday. And then on the right in 2021 at an Ole Miss football game, which is actually where we both graduated undergrad from. And here's just a few pictures of me and my mom matching in public because we think it's funny. And now we kind of do it unironically. Moving on to my stepdad, which is her husband. He said a group of people legally and or biologically related who have lived together and or support each other during life. So on the left, we have us in 2014 and we had just gotten finished kayaking. And then on the right, us in 2021, and we are rafting in Chattanooga. So now we have my half sister. She said, family is people who have earned your trust, love and respect. And on the left, we have a picture of me and her in 2009 at a wedding. And as you can see, there's chocolate on her elbow in this picture for some reason. And then in the right picture, we have us in 2021 when I went to go visit this past summer in Arizona. So here's our father, and this is what he had to say. He said, it's like being in love. Each member is different and you love each other in their own way. They sometimes fill you up with joy or break your heart, but unconditional love is always still there. So fun fact, in this picture in 2004 on the left, this was actually at a recital that I had uh, in kindergarten on family. So I was the, actually the mom in the recital. And then on the right, we have us in 2021 uh, when I went to go visit in Arizona. And then here's my grandmother. She said, family is everything and family comes first. So this is my dad's mom. And at the top, this is us in 1998 when I was an infant. And then at the bottom, it's us in 2014 when I went to go visit. So what is the correct way to define family? Were any of those the correct way or the wrong way? I think they're all the correct way. So family can be through marriage maybe, or just our best friends. Our grandparents could be our sole providers. Maybe our parents are same-sex marriage and we could have siblings through adoption. So family can be as diverse as the people that are in them. And although we won't be covering all the different ways that family can look, I wanted to point out that family can look however you think it looks. And it can be very different for each person, but we're gonna be looking at family through a more nuclear type of family structure with parents and siblings and our grandparents. So we'll be looking at that from childhood to late adulthood. So some questions I just want everyone to keep in mind as we go through this is how do our family members impact our development and how much do they? Does this have lasting effects? If so, how do we combat these effects if they're negative? So first we're gonna start with early childhood and we're gonna kind of cover the parenting styles, what they are and how they affect us because we'll be kind of touching on this throughout the entire video. So authoritative, is high in emotional support, but also high in structure. So having rules and subsequential consequences to breaking rules. And although they do have these rules, they're open to communication and interpretation from their children. And so high in emotional support, but rules. And then let's move to permissive, which is also high in the emotional support, but low in that structure. So really giving the child um, whatever they want and whatever their desires are instead of having those rules and expectations. Next, let's go to authoritarian, which is high in that structure again, with having rules and strict parents, um, but there's little communication and little emotional support from them. So it's very my way or the highway type of parenting style. And right below that we have dismissive, which is low in, in that emotional support, but also low in family in that structure. So very uninvolved. So when parents are able to express their positive emotions more like happiness and excitement with our children, we actually see well-being and social skills exceed in children that have those type of parents. Um, but 
Similarly, we see that if parents are low in expressing that and high in expressing negative emotions like disappointment and sadness and anger, we see that affecting the child as well negatively. So we also see similar results in father-child relationships. So just like learning how to ride a bike, humans are learning how to appropriately express their emotions and interact socially. So we're getting most of that from our family members, whoever that might be. Having sibling relationships, specifically good ones, helps prepare us for social situations. So as a child, we're almost getting practice on how to, how, practice on how to interact with other children by having siblings. So children learn from watching and observing behaviors. So now we're gonna go into adolescence. So as we can see, parents can negatively or positively influence the trajectory of our lives. Um, so if we see parents that are more angry, we tend to see adolescent children that are more angry too. But we see the opposite effect with parents that are expressing more positive emotions, the children are also doing the same thing. So with grandchild relationships with adolescents, we do see a link between pro-social behavior and grandparents. So pro-social just means relating to or denoting behavior, which is positive, helpful, and intending to promote social acceptance and friendship. So these are great qualities to have and just having these interactions with our, with our grandparents or our siblings or our parents can denote these positive um, interactions and friendships. So now we're going into adulthood. As we get older, we're venturing off and having new experiences and we're not around our family as much. But even though we're not, we still need this family connection with better family connection means better support and overall well-being and positive mental health. So these are all great things to have. So even though we're exploring and having new things happen to us, these relationships that we started with are still gonna be beneficial. So with our sibling relationships, although we're not spending as much time with them typically, we are seeing the quality of that relationship getting better. Maybe that's because we're getting older, but I think also it's time to reflect and to experience other things and not having those influences of our parents on our sibling relationships. Also, we see that sometimes grandparent relationships with our older adult grandchildren can be some, somewhat one-sided with the adult child doing more things around the house maybe and helping out or like that, getting groceries, maybe listening so that their, their grandparent can express themselves. Um, but they're both really gaining from the social interaction and helping one another. So. As we are trying to find our path in adulthood, familial connection can still be needed even when we're trying to explore and do our own thing. They can still continue to guide us in life events and support us. So now we're getting into older adulthood and actually those who had authoritative and indulgent parents, which is high in that emotional support, had overall social and emotional well-being even into their late adulthood compared to the other two types of parenting styles that had low in that emotional support. Specifically, a study found that older adults that had negative experiences in childhood were able to reflect and actually find the positives in those negative experiences. So as time goes on, those things don't affect us as much. And also we have the time to reflect on it and actually experience that in a different light. So maybe you have more resilience for things in later adulthood because of those, those negative experiences in our childhood. So as we get older, although our parents' actions can have lasting effects on our well-being, there are other things that can actually be more influential in later years, like our own children, maybe grandchildren, or generativity. So what is generativity? It's a need to nurture and guide the younger generation to contribute. And actually having this ability to help other people promotes social and positive well-being in ourselves and to other people. So what I'm saying is go out and go help your community because it's spreading positivity to everyone. So to recap, we all have the potential to go through these stages of these lives. So from child 
to parent, to grandparent, and then starts all over again. And it's the circle of life. So in summary, our parents and caretakers might have lasting effects on our emotional well-being, but as we get older, other relationships and opportunities can start to contribute to our well-being and combat those effects. So our siblings actually are some of the longest relationships that we have in our lifetime, which is really interesting. Lastly, the most important thing about family is the quality of the relationships. So having somebody that you trust and you can express yourself to is the most important thing.